this is the Trek Transport Plus. It's an electric cargo style bike from around 2011, 2012, and it leverages the Bionics drive system here, but it's packaged uh, sort of by Trek, so you won't see any co-branding here on the battery or anything. Um, I think they call it the EPS system. It's like electric propulsion system. Um, they've even got a different style display up here. So I have reviewed the Bionics kits on their own, and they're some of the higher quality kits available for electric bikes because they offer regenerative braking, these really nice direct drive gearless rear hub motors that are smooth and quiet. Um, and when you combine them with something like a cargo bike here, uh, they can work pretty well. You know, the hub motor design does increase your unsprung weight, but in this case, there's no rear suspension. So it's a, it's a really good setup. You will notice that the battery and the motor are both uh, towards the rear of the bike, which makes this a rear heavy design. Uh, and it isn't the lightest bike around. This is about 63 pounds, depending on which size you get. This is a 17 inch frame. They also have a 20 inch frame and this nice uh, bronze color. There are a lot of little extras on this bike that I appreciate, including that front fender, the flopulator, and that kind of keeps the front wheel a little bit more straight if you're, you're loading the racks, especially the front rack. That's only capable of carrying like 25 pounds, and you'll notice that it's actually connected to the front fork as opposed to the frame, like a proper porter rack. And that means when you turn, like you can build momentum on this thing, it can become a little bit less stable. But on the rear, you can carry about 100 pounds. Um, overall, this bike is rated to carry about 225 pounds, including the rider. So it's pretty capable, depending on how much you weigh. And it's got these neat like footrest things that actually fold up. So if you just kind of unsnap that, pull out the pin, Look at that, now you've got like little running boards. So someone could sit on the back here, you could put a pad on it, or you can put like a box here and strap it onto the frame. There are all kinds of, um, you know, bosses all around here. And you'll notice that there's this extra rail that's been added to the frame. Uh, that's a standard gauge tubing for adding panniers, right? And that's really cool because this thicker gauge tubing, you know, it's reinforced, TIG welded, the whole frame, by the way, it's aluminum TIG welded. Um, that's a little bit sturdier but it's not gonna work as well for panniers. So they've done a good job kind of thinking through different design elements. You can see here, this is where you can bungee down or you can tie stuff on. Uh, it's a really, a really nice frame in, in a lot of ways, but it isn't quite as stiff feeling as something like maybe like a steel frame or just um, maybe a thicker aluminum. So when you're on this thing, especially if there's weight on the back, the whole frame kind of flexes torsionally and that's a little bit awkward. Um, also some other complaints, you'll notice that back here, there's a V brake, whereas in the front, you've got a disc brake, right? I think it's BB5. Um, it looks like maybe 160 millimeter and it's mechanical. So there's a little bit of inconsistency in the braking. I like that you've got a fender up front, but there's no fender in the back. You know, water just kind of, you know, it, it's mostly covered from that, from that rack, but it'd be nice to keep the battery a little bit cleaner. The battery doesn't come on and off very easily either. Again, this is 2011, 2012 timeframe. Electric bikes uh, just weren't quite as refined back then. And I think this is a really good good shot at it. Again, for just under about 3,000 bucks, like $2,800. Also, the, the double-legged kickstand is nice because it keeps the bike straight for loading it. But it's not as wide as the ones that are from Extra Cycle or some of the newer bikes. Um, and you notice, like if you're loading this up, it's not super stable, right? Also the handlebars, kind of this go wing configuration, which is nice. Got the ergo grips from Bone Trasher, but they're um, they're not quite as wide, which would might, might give you a little bit of extra steering control. They've got these Tektro brake levers, and the right hand one does have a cutoff to uh, to the motor as well as activating regenerative braking. Okay, so that's really cool. A lot of the Bionic systems, they've got you know four levels of assist as well as four le levels of regen, but this one, it really only has four levels of assist and there's no throttle. So you have to be pedaling the whole time. There's a torque sensor right inside that motor. That's a 350 watt direct drive gearless. It's equivalent to the Bionic's PL350. The battery pack's a 36 volt. So um, it's just not as powerful as the newer Bionic systems. They're all 48 volts. The electricity flows more efficiently. Also, you'll notice Shimano Acera cassette back here. It's got the trigger shifters up top, eight speeds. Works well enough for the rear and then two speeds in the front. So total 16 speeds. I do like that they've, they've got this like aluminum bash guard there. Um, kind of keeps things on track, but 
I think in the in the rear here they're using bushings instead of bearings so the componentry on this bike isn't top of the line this is kind of utilitarian which is you know maybe what you'd expect for a for a transporter I do like that it's got lights built in that run off the main battery pack there this one's not you know especially bright but it gets the job done it keeps you more visible you can always add something up top here and then they've got a brake light built right into the back or a rear light because it, it does activate and it's neat how look at this it kind of extends the frame extends a little bit in the back you've just got a lot to work with in terms of transporting cargo with this thing uh, which is really nice and then again on the tires 26 by 1.5 bone charger um, really all of the the accessories are bone charger hope i'm saying that right uh, got a nice saddle look at this ssr bone charger le leather saddle there and um oh that the other thing the left brake lever doesn't have a cutoff so a lot of the bionic systems they rely on your right uh right brake lever to uh to activate that what is this alpha drive fsa cranks wellgo you know medium sized platform maybe a little bit lighter than the thick um, all metal ones that they have so i think it's probably time to just hop on this thing and see how it rides um, you'll notice quick release in the front but to service this bike you're going to need traditional tools in the rear and uh, that can be a little bit more complex because you've got wires and things running to the motor um, in addition to the chain and the sprockets and everything over here also it only comes with you know one of these saddlebags or rack bags whatever you call them i think it's got like a 50 pound capacity which is pretty impressive but it can make the bike feel a little bit unbalanced because it's only on one side so you could always get another one um, but you know that that can add up starts to add up a little bit over time one of the other drawbacks to any gearless direct drive uh, motor like this hub motor is that you get a little bit of cogging which means that the wheel coasts to a stop more quickly because there's magnets repelling the stators in there um, and so uh, you know that's part of what enables you to do regenerative braking but if you've turned the system completely off and you're just riding with it you're going to end up with a little bit of that so i'm going to show you what cogging looks like So really not too bad, but there is a little bit of uh, just sort of resistance happening there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hop on and uh, show you the display to light up once we start pedaling and then also um, just show you the motor. Oh boy. There we go. So you can probably see the display there. It shows those four different levels of assist. And anytime that I activate that right brake lever, it's going to engage regen. Kind of lights up there, which is pretty cool. Really quiet motor system. I'm going to go ahead and turn it up a little bit and show you, see if you can hear anything back there. There we go. Yeah, you can really feel it kicking in with the regen when I pull that brake lever there. Maybe that saves some of your pads in the rear. That front rack again. Fairly upright body position, which is pretty nice, you know. Let you kind of keep your head up aware for traffic. So if you're using a cargo bike, you might be downtown in a city or something. So that is the Trek Transport Plus electric cargo bike. Again, a little bit older design, uh, but a lot of good good features. Um, aside from maybe that that frame flex, let me show you that again real quick if I can. I don't know if you can see that but the whole frame sort of flexes and that's exacerbated by a heavy load on the back of the bike so there you go for the full write-up on this including pictures and all the specs 
I'll see you back at electricbikereview.com.